In 2005, Rader was convicted of killing 10 people between the years of 1974 and 1991. And we can assume Koberger likely studied the BTK murders at length. But did he ever actually have contact with Dennis Rader directly? Or did Rader ever perhaps reach out and contact him? I am joined now by Dennis Rader's daughter, Carrie Rawson. She is also the book, uh, the author of the book, A Serial Killer's Daughter. Uh, Carrie is really someone who has overcome unimaginable tragedy. She is now a voice for other victims. She is truly a survivor um, in every sense of the word. And Carrie, we really appreciate you taking the time uh, to be with us tonight. Um, you and I spoke in, in January, um, and I talked to you about whether or not Brian Kohlberger uh, had any contact with your dad. Have you learned anything new since then? Um, since we spoke early in January, um, an, a couple outlets reached out to my father through a gel app called Getting Out, which I didn't know my dad had, so I had to kind of deal with that. Um, and they, they texted him, basically. And um, my dad said no on contact with Koberger. Um, but he's been then interviewed a few times by some outlets, um, giving opinions, you know, on the Koberger case and comparing like his um, situation early on in prison to, with Koberger. So um, as far as we know, my father hasn't had direct contact with Koberger, but we don't have proof either way. And because my father likes to play games and is a pathological liar, um, and he likes the attention from the media, it's impossible to say right now. Do you think he's lying, Carrie? Um, I think on this, he probably is telling the truth, but he does definitely like the attention that's come back up from it. And he's going to do whatever in his power to keep keep people on the line, to keep coming back to contact him. That's 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 a typical game my father plays with the media. It's interesting he gave this statement to another news outlet where he said, uh, since I spent uh, from February 2005 to April 2005 in a cell by myself, I know how he feels, uh, referring to Koberger. Um, it's just interesting that he is now thinking and talking uh, about Koberger, who likely studied him. Um, yeah, I mean, my father has access to TV, radio, newspapers, magazines. So I'm definitely sure he's keeping up with all of this. Um, he's keeping up probably with me. Um, he likes to sort of compete with me in the media. It's it's kind of all just a big mess. Um, when my father, my father was in jail, um, the county jail, Sedgwick County Jail from February through June, and um, well, actually through August until he was sentenced to 177 years. Then he was sent to the El Dorado Correction Facility Prison. Um, as far as I know, he's been in solitary since he's been in there. So I don't know what he's talking about being alone because actually when he was in jail, he had access to other um, people in jail, he was playing cards with them. He said he was kind of like trying to control the room. And then when he was sent to prison, he was in solitary. Um, I believe he's still in solitary. So I don't exactly know what he's talking about, about being alone versus now. Yeah, and it's interesting that he's sort of comparing his situation to how Koberger must feel. It's kind of eerie, I, I guess is a way to describe it. What's your um, relationship with, with your dad like now? Last time we talked, I know you said that you had pretty much cut off um, all communication. Um, yeah, so I was very close to my dad growing up. Um, he was like my best friend. We went camping and hiking. Um, he walked me down the aisle when I got married in 03. He moved me into Michigan right after that. Then 18 months later, we found out he was um, arrested as a BTK killer. Since then, I've only been in contact with him via letters. I have never visited him in prison and I couldn't handle phone calls even. Um, we were in contact off and on. And then and then in um, the spring of 2021, I had to legally cut him off with a do not contact order. I worked with victim services in Kansas, um, KDOC and police detectives in Wichita in the prison and they all helped me. Um, I had to cut my father off because he was cyber stalking me through third, third party people that were contacting me through social media and email. Um, it was just getting to be a safety issue. They were trying to figure out where I live. They were calling my dad. They would see me like say they see me tonight on media. Somebody's probably going to contact my dad tomorrow and say, hey, I saw her. And it just it got to be where it was becoming a safety issue for me and my family. And so uh, victim services stepped in and helped me.
Yeah, and we know that there are people now contacting Koberger and, and sending love letters and all sorts of twisted things. And, and you talk about your dad being in contact with so many people who are then even able to find you. I mean, how does this all happen behind the scenes? I guess we would, I would just assume a serial killer doesn't have that kind of access. Well, any prisoner has human rights still. So my father has the right to correspondence. He has the right to phone calls. He has he has the right to, to TV and things like that. Now he has to earn those rights. They use these because for somebody that's a lifer or on death row, you have to have some sort of incentive to get them to behave or they won't. So they use these things to get them to behave. Hey, you can earn mail. You can earn the right to these apps. Um, there isn't... There isn't a lot that can be done because there's so much mail coming in, so much mail coming out. And if you think about every other need a prison has, like a love letter has got to be at the bottom <laughs> concern um, on these, you know, officers' parts that have such a challenging job already. And there's really, I don't know if there's a lot that can be done, unfortunately. I mean, it's really up to the individual person to make the decision not to contact these people. But it, I mean, it's been going on for decades. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.